Okay, Joe. How come we've never met before, dude? It is it yeah, I don't know. I don't really. Even know why. It's a shame. It's a shame. Joe, it is a shame. Joe Kiri here, of course, or Joe. Yes. How do you pray? I just say Joe. But, but you put the DJO on it. It makes me think I have to do the little Joe. I know. It does sound like you'd have to, but I'm not Joe. that cultured. No, I'm not that cultured. It's just it's just Joe. Yeah. All right. I just did it because I thought, hey, well, how can I do my <laughs> name but have it kind of not be my name, you know? So well, you, that, you've uh, achieved it. I, yeah, I've achieved a very confusing thing, but, uh, you know, I, I, I do, you know, the name has grown on me. I kind of went through a period of not liking the name, but you know, I kind of do like it now. So at, at a certain point you were thinking, should I change from Joe well, maybe. to something else? yeah. It's funny also because you're JoJo and I'm Joe. It's Joe. A, it's, we got so, so many we're kind jo- of, you know, a lot of Joe energy going we, on. We may have hit room. the Joe limit in, the, in the room here. I think All right, this have. is what you're doing here, dude. This is, by the way, people know you. My daughter, for example, she's mm-hmm. 15. Sophie's 15. And we're obviously, you know, Stranger Things fans. Nice. She loves your music. Uh, I said, but, but I said, hey, do you know this song, you know? And she said, oh, my God, I love that. She gave me all the TikTok references and everything. Mm-hmm. I said, do you know who that is? She goes, yeah, it's this dude named Joe. And she pronounced it, does, do, she did, said the name wrong. Yeah. But, yeah, okay. uh, but she she totally, it was, it, this is the character she knew. Mm-hmm. She didn't associate it with your acting at all. Yeah. It's, which is, I guess, kind of what you're trying to go for, sorry, right? Yeah, I guess mission accomplished. Also, thank you, Sophie. That's nice that you like the music. Um, But, yeah, that was the initial intent when I kind of released the first album that I did I just kind of wanted people to listen to it with an open mind and maybe you know having the Stranger Things connection uh would have helped in some ways but I felt like it actually maybe would have gotten in the way of just kind of yeah listening to the music at, with a clean slate so that was my intention there kind of look a little different put the music out and just kind of see really kind of what happens with yeah. it let it sink or swim on its own I think it's a smart move in the sense that if you really want a real reaction you know, don't, if you tack Stranger Things onto it, it becomes, you know... It's Connected just, it, to this It's thing. own thing, you know? Yeah, of course. And I, I'm obviously very grateful for everything that I've been a part of, and I love the show. So it's nothing like that. It's just, you know, I don't know, just a way to experience the art without any sort of preconceived notions. And you've been creating this... This is uh, two albums. Yep, I've done two of these, yeah. And uh, if I'm told that if once the acting, or Stranger Things in particular... Mm-hmm. Raps, mm-hmm. you were going to go into a third album kind of a thing? Are you like really going to focus on music heavy, heavy, heavy at that point? You know, I've been, you know, since that, that album came out in 2022. So since then, I've already been pretty much head down doing it. It's just something that I do in between acting gigs, kind of. It's really freeing in that way because I can kind of view it as this, it's like a, a passion project for me. Right. So, um, yeah, I've been working on it, and I'll keep working on it, and then kind of reassess what I what I want to do when the show ends, in terms of maybe playing some live shows. Um, but the intention is to just continue to do it as long as it's fun, and as long as I feel like I got kind of something to say. And doing this, like we're talking off here, mm-hmm. uh, doing the the music, you control everything. Yep. That's the beauty of it. Maybe the pressure of it, I don't know, uh, but that's the that's the that's the cool part about it. As opposed to the acting thing, there's like there's 500 people involved in that thing and you control mm-hmm. very little of it other than just playing the character. So yeah. this is kind of walk me through that kind of thought process. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, I think that uh, you're just one element, you know, you're, you're basically the trumpet player in the orchestra if you're the actor and <laughs> right, okay. it's amazing. You can do your thing and but kind of not even that because trumpet players don't get chopped up and edited and then put, you know, they're playing this live thing. So, in a way, you know, it really does scratch an itch to be a part of a team and a part of a collaborative group. I mean, example, Stranger Things, what an amazing thing to be a part of. Right. And that really does, you know, fulfill me in some ways. But then there's also part of me that likes to have the control and likes the pressure of the whole thing resting on my shoulders. And um, I've always kind of been independently driven. I... Uh, I really enjoy working on projects and seeing things through from the beginning until the end and learning from them and working with people. And so that's really kind of what this project has turned into for me is a way to um, yeah, kind of flex those muscles, I guess. Hey, you, what we were talking once again, off air, a lot of conversations off air. Uh, what you're doing, speaking of this character you've created, it's kind of like um, – Hannah Montana. Yeah, yeah, we were talking Hannah Montana. Do you ever get? Uh, yeah, do, do you ever get like walk through uh, like the grocery store dressed yeah. as 
Joe no. with the wig. And, no, I mean, no. I'd be curious, you know. Absolutely not. <laughs> Although I probably... You should. I should do that. You're right. I'm missing an opportunity. Um, you know, there is some funny, uh, you know, similarities there. And I... That's a show that, you know, was on in my house. I have four <laughs> sisters. So that's so funny. Um, and, yeah. It's kind of like Andy Kaufman uh, was also an inspiration. Kind of like a, just something that's a little confusing and a little unnerving. Yeah. And I think sometimes... Things that are like that um, can kind of pique people's interests when you don't fully understand something or if you're in on a joke that maybe other people don't know about. And I really like when I feel that way. Um, I'm a big fan of Nathan For You. I don't know if you know that guy. I've heard you. Okay, yeah. Yep. He is an, he's amazing. Um, I'm a big fan of Tim and Eric. These are just kind of like these comedians. And um, you know, Nathan, obviously, he's... Got a bunch of amazing television. So, um, anyways, I don't know. All that to say, I just think it's kind of like, uh, yeah, there's a level of like playfulness involved in the whole character element. Of when it. do you think your fans uh, started to realize that they t- started to put two and two together? Like, this guy looks kind of like that dude. I, you know, I thought it was kind of over, but it seems like it's, not. it's really... continued to sort of happen. Um, but it's a sort of a slow thing, I guess. And I guess the more they independently exist... Um, apart from each other, the funner it is when they kind of come together. Right. Um, yeah. Fair enough. And this track, uh, this track, uh, end of beginning. Mm-hmm. I keep wanting to add a the in there. Of course. And, yeah. yeah. End of beginning. When did you know that this one was really? Because it was. It came out what two years, roughly two mm-hmm. years ago. And yeah. now this, you know, this thing just happened, and it's it's weird like that with TikTok and social and whatnot. Things just blow up that have been out for ten years. You know. When did you realize this one is really? It's getting crazy on you. Um, How'd you find out? Like somebody just hit you up like, man, the views are going up or like, how's that? Walk me through that. Yeah, my my collaborator and good friend, Adam Tyne, we worked together and he kind of let me in on, you know, due to social media's uh, involvement in music these days, things will kind of have like little moments. So it's happened in the past where there's been a little bump and people kind of like what you're saying, put the pieces together and kind of let check it out. But right. This has sort of unfolded in a, in, a, in a bigger way, definitely. And it's been kind of crazy and exciting, but also hard to really put my finger on because for me, day to day, nothing really is changing. But <laughs> it's, it's a lot of good news, and I'm really excited people are, uh, are checking it out. I guess the coolest thing for me really about the whole, the whole thing is that it, it's, you know, people try to rig the system and try to create these moments. But this really seems to have happened naturally, and it's because people, I think, have taken what I thought was a really specific emotion just for my life uh, it, that is in this song and have kind of adopted it as their own, and it has kind of turned into something that's for them rather than something that's just mine. And that's like the point of making music and the point of art in general is for people to do that. So to have something that I've created um, have that effect is incredibly rewarding and yeah very cool what a cool way to put that like it, it you know trying to rig the system this this couldn't have been more opposite of that this is yeah it's just like it was already out it's just, just sitting you know <laughs> showing up like bam and the song is uh yeah. it's uh, as far as the, the meaning for you in the song it's about your sister right or it's about um it's about a lot of things but um i moved to chicago for school and lived in chicago illinois and um had a really amazing time right after college as well playing in the music scene there and then got cast in Stranger Things and kind of got sort of swept into this other world where I um, was shooting the show and kind of moved where I moved to LA. And the song was really about just kind of coming back to, you know, Chicago where I had these formative years and, you know, reflecting and reminiscing on how quickly everything changed in my life, how how different it was and um, just the amazing group of friends and the amazing community that I was in and just kind of a like an homage to that, looking back towards it and being kind of nostalgic, but then also a reminder that um, you can't just live in the past and that you're probably in one of those moments right now in, and you should just kind of wake up and, and enjoy where you're at. Joe, uh, I, I got to get some acting questions in there. Hit, hit me. Let's All right. go. I know you're in Fargo season five. I am. Uh, congrats on that. Man, thank you. That I mean, was amazing. To It was freezing. Pretty wild. <laughs> Yeah. I can, you know, I never know if it's like freezing or like just, you know, fake, uh, fake freezing. No, it's real. Real freezing. There's a reason it looks so cold. It's because it is so cold. I bet you, when you shoot in those scenes, in some of these scenes, it lasts, you know, 
you know, on on screen, you know, four minutes, five minutes, mm-hmm. six minutes. It's like you're doing it. You're shooting it for six oh, a week, basically. It's just for, you're like freezing forever. Get me out of here. Rolling around in the snow. Oh yeah, and of course, dude. I, I mean, who isn't a fan of Stranger Things? Oh, that's nice. This is you're probably sick of hearing about it. I get it. No, oh, I, or you're not good. I'm just as shocked as anyone else, honestly. It's congrats on everything. Thank dude. you. Thank okay, you. Okay, the the last season, mm-hmm. I think the la- is the next season. The la- it's it. That's the last e- one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What can you say, if anything, or will producers have a heart attack if you mention anything about it? Can you tease yeah, any I'm, tiny? Little I'm thing? I'm pretty good at keeping not- it under wraps. To be honest with you, I don't think they're too worried about me because just because I've been I've been. I'm trained at this point, <laughs> just out of my own fear I, of everything. You've signed your life away. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, we're wor- we're working on it now, and it's just fantastic to be back, really, and with that group of people. And I feel like there's something about that special, you know, it's like it's a special recipe, it's yeah. a special concoction when all of those people are together, and it it has a real you know, specific feeling for me. So yeah, to be back in it after a while feels, feels really good. Stranger Things and of all the seasons you've done, mm-hmm. all of them, what is the most physically demanding scene you've shot? Love this question. Um, I had to do this scene in the fourth season where the I- The diving episode. Exactly. I got an amazing uh, experience where I got to take these lessons uh, and learn how to do uh, free diving, breath holding. That's a crazy sport, man. Very, very cool. So I um, spent about three days in a pool learning how to do this skill. And then while we shot over the course of about four days, um, yeah, it was just a really unforgettable experience. And there are so many professionals specific to underwater shooting who were there. And I'm just like a lover of cinema and being on set. And so to kind of ask all these guys questions and um, they had just finished working on the new Avatar movie and um, they were telling me all about how Kate Winslet could hold her breath for like five minutes. No. Uh, Yeah, she really did. She actually did. Five minutes. Using this technique, it's really unbelievable. And um, you breathe up also using pure oxygen and then you can go down and if you limit your body activity, you you can really hold your breath for a long time. I, I saw someone hold their breath for 12 minutes. That's insane. Insane. How long, what was your max? I maxed at four minutes, but I can't do that anymore. I could probably like two minutes now. So underwater, you just, you know, you're shooting. Yeah. Holding your breath. It's kind of cool. Safety so, directors all around you. I yeah, guess, so you, know? you go down to the bottom of this big pool, and then you are holding your breath. They'll call action. You, have, you, you take your goggles off, and you do this action, whatever it is. You swim over, and you look at this hole. And then they say, Kerp. you know, it's like <laughs> underwater cut. Right. And then you swim back over to, you know, whoever's over there and you get on your little tank and then you wait there as that your eyes are closed. You wait for them to reset. You know, this the guy operating the camera has to swim back to where he has to swim because it's all handheld under there. It's really unbelievable. And there's like a set, underwater set. It's like the biggest movie magic thing you've ever thought of. And it's like, it's so fun. It's, That's, that was a pinch me moment. That is straight up wild. Dude. It was so cool. And if you guys haven't seen seen that scene, uh, I actually went and rewatched it because I wanted to ask you about that. I, of course, you brought that one That's up. That's that, yeah. It was just. It looks like you're underwater forever. And, I, I, and it felt that way. Huh? <laughs> it felt that way. Oh my god! Once what again, they don't tell you though is that everybody. I'm sorry. No, no, now, please. No, I'm ranting. Is that everybody? <laughs> this is actually kind of gross. I don't know why I'm saying this on the radio. Let's is go. that because you're in the pool all day and everybody's in the pool all day and you're actually you're like working out. You know, you're swimming all day. But what they don't tell you. There's like a filter in the pool, but everybody's like being in the pool. No. Everybody's being in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. It's kind of like you this could unspoken hop out the thing. pool and go go to the little bathroom around the corner. Think about it. Everybody would be hopping out every 30 seconds. Everybody would be, you know. No kidding. Yeah, I can't believe I just spoiled that. That is. All right. Note to self. If the, if I ever get an act again in a pool, say no to that. Yeah. Jeez. That, yeah. Congrats on everything. Yeah. I- Except for that part. Except, except for that. Joe, final question. This has nothing to do with acting, nothing okay. to do with music or anything. Okay. I am obsessed with the paranormal. Oh, cool. Ghost, haunted houses. I have a podcast, which I do year-round, called Paranormalish. I talk to mm-hmm. people who've had paranormal encounters. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had anything you would consider a paranormal encounter? Um, when we were record, I was in this band called Post Animal, and that was in Chicago. And we had this experience recording uh, at a cabin uh, at a friend's lake house in uh, Lake Papa, Michigan. And my friend, Jake Hirschland, had a very 
scary experience where he was closing up the, you know, locking the front door at night and he looked out in the yard and it looked like there was a girl standing, but bent at the waist to the side oh, and boy. like her hair was to the side. And he did not tell anyone until we left. Actually, he kind of, or at least like until later in the trip because it had really unsettled him and he wasn't sure if he actually saw what he saw. But apparently there was another group of people, Teddy's band, Slow Pulp, and Emily saw the same thing in a dream before they went to record and then they decided to cancel because she saw the exact same thing in her dream. No kidding. Isn't that scary? And this is where, uh, Chicago area. This is like, uh, you know, Lake County, Michigan. I couldn't even tell you. How could I? How could I do some research on that? What do I? What do I? What do I search? Oh, there's no research. It's just like a friend's small house. Oh, is it? okay. Yeah. God, if you, this is just hearsay story. I'm just totally, you know, blowing <laughs> yeah. smoke here. I'm gonna, probably. I'm gonna choose to believe them. Yeah. Okay. Joe, thank you for hanging out, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Congrats on everything. At the end of every interview, fist bump to make it official. Give yeah. me a little. Bye. Yeah. That's a Joe, 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 Joe. That's right.